Hello and welcome back to BS Rugby. The Six Nations is just days away now and the excitement, and especially for me on the channel, is certainly building for the greatest tournament on earth. I've done previews for England, Scotland and the Irish already and this time it's the turn of the French. How are France going to do after a very successful autumn beating the All Blacks and of course with a home World Cup in 18 months? There's a lot of expectation going into this competition. I chatted with Yannick Vuelmi, who of course is French himself, but lives here in the UK, to get his thoughts on the squad, on the form of the past 12 months, how this team has developed, the appointment of Dupont as captain, and of course his predictions for each of the games. If you want to listen to this as an audio, you can do. There's a link in the description down below to listen to the audio version. And if you do enjoy here on YouTube, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. We're pushing to reach 2,400 subscribers by the start of the Six Nations. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and let me know in the comments down below your predictions for how France are going to do this season. Anyway, enjoy the pod and I'll see you tomorrow for the Italy preview. So let's start by looking back at last year's Six Nations. So close, yet so far for France. Um, some fantastic results along the way, and then some moments of madness. Um, if I just take your memories back uh, on the opening weekend, beating yeah. Italy 50 <laughs> points to 10. Um, and although that sounds big, a lot of teams did do that to the Italians, but then a really good hard win away in Dublin winning by 15 points to 13. Um, at that point, what was the mood like in France? Was it like the Grand Slam might be on now? Yes, it was. It was. It was def definitely. I mean, I remember myself was just crazy. I mean, I was thinking for a long time we did have a French team back. And that was pretty exciting time. Still exciting time now. Um, but okay, they done few mistakes on that Six Nation. Few, you know, few. I remember Dupont kicking, thinking what over time, and uh, England did have a penalty and score three points, bonus points for England. Let's see what happens this year. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this year is going to be really exciting because I, I, well, from my perspective, I think there were five teams that could win it. I mean, I'm putting Wales in there, quietly putting Wales in there, I'm not too sure as a Welshman, but I do think there are five teams uh, that could win it. Um, and sadly, I'm going to take you back to that Scotland game. Uh, I knew last it. Year. <laughs> um, obviously, um, France has been playing some wonderful rugby uh, throughout the competition and were in a really good chance to win uh, the title. And I think, trying not to be too stereotypical about this French, about French rugby, the big thing a lot of people say is, oh, you don't know which France team is going to turn up. Um, and you don't know if they can keep their heads for the 80 minutes. Do you feel like, because if you look then into the autumn where you managed to get over the line against the All Blacks, not just beat them, but thrash them, really, um, do you feel like the mentality has changed, that the players have matured, that Galtier and Sean Edwards has got them to be able to control games a little bit better? I think what's happened now, we got so many players so many players, as the like of Dupont and Tamak, uh, all those players was uh, under 20 world champion. All mm. those players beat all blacks already. They beat the, the, they beat Australia already. They beat a lot of team already, and they believe on themselves. So they have that mentality, that winning mentality now. Oh, they no scare of all blacks. They beat them mm. already. They they no scare of them. They got that mentality to to play, to want to play, to play champion rugby and want to win and enjoy themselves. And that is what we needed desperately for the last 10, 12 years. And now we got that back. So I think I know what you mean. I mean it, it is true. You want that the French team can be exceptional and sometimes they don't turn up. It's a lack of discipline. It's a like, but uh, those players not anymore. They're professional. They're young. They 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 got the winning mentality now and. Uh, I think those days are behind us. I think so. <laughs> I really <laughs> hope so anyway. Yeah, and uh, I remember watching that All Blacks game. I was watching it with my dad. It was quite late kickoff here in the UK, but just being absolutely blown away 
by the way that Dupont and Antomat were controlling the game. I am a huge fan of Ficou in the centre. I think he's so underappreciated and I don't think people quite realise how good he is. Um, and then you had uh, Vakatawa in the centre, who yeah. is uh, quite a scary guy to come up against, I'm sure. Um, but this France team going into this Six Nations have named Antoine Dupont as captain. Of course, World Player of the Year, won the Champions Cup with Toulouse, took France really close to Six Nations, won a game out in Australia, beat the All Blacks. Do you think that's the right decision to go with Antoine Dupont? Because Olivon is injured, isn't he? Yeah, Olivon is injured. I myself, I love Olivon as a, as a, as a captain because he goes a temperament and he's absolutely he's such a fighter. And mm. but he's injured, as you said. But uh, I think Dupont is the right call because uh, there's many reasons for that. Because as I said, you know, he's young, he's fearless, he give a fantastic vibe to the team, mm. and uh, all the players that are around him, you know, he want he want to win, he want to, so it's a it's a right call. Also. You know, it's a strange thing to say, but also it's one of the kind of player we didn't have, we didn't have this profile of player for a long time, uh, like Chabal. Yeah, he gave a good uh, picture for French rugby. He's fantastic for the youngster. All the youngsters love him. He's more player want to play rugby just because Dupont. And then, you know, the last time that happened in France, in France, it was because Chabal. And so I think you know, it seems silly, but I think it's kind of is I think it's a very good call. For French rugby in general, and uh, yeah, so so yeah, and uh, you know, he, he goes a good temper for that. But if Olivon come back, I think it should be him still. Yeah, I, I think Dupont's a brilliant option, and uh, is you know he's at scrum half, so he's very much involved in the game all the time. He's very integral to the way France play. That understanding between him and Antimac or Jalibert, whoever starts at ten. I thought I'd show you the squad quickly just to get your thoughts on it, and you can tell me. If there's anyone in there that you're surprised by or people have missed out. So this was the squad that was named. First of all, 42 players to pick. Are you surprised how big the squad is? Uh, no, 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 no. Because uh, Galtier likes to put uh, competition within the team. Mm. And uh, so I think I think it's good. I think it's a very good call. Yeah, no, no, no. It's good. It's good. Yeah. And you go like a few players from Pro D2 again. Mm. So that is quite exciting. So he show. He show player that they go to play if they want to play for France because anybody can come at any time, mm. and I think it's a very good call. I love Galtier. I love Galtier the way uh, the way you do it. Yeah, and you mentioned about players coming from the second division. There, do you think that's with an eye on the World Cup because home World Cup, very very exciting team, a real possibility that France could win the World Cup. Do you think Galtier is thinking about that as well? I think everything is done to win the World Cup anyway. Uh, yeah. that, that for the last two years or so, mm. but uh, but uh, like a player like uh, Jaminet, I mean, mm. he's no, you know, he's, uh, at the moment he got ninety five percent kicking rate at the moment, yeah, all the season. So he's a fantastic kicker. He he, play, he mm. played in Pro D2 in the second French division, but uh, I mean, the, the, he plays. Uh, I follow the Pro D2 myself because my my own team play in Pro D2. So mm. he, he, I mean, when I see him play, be playing, I mean. Pfft, it's, it's, it's fantastic. As you said, lots of young players. And it feels like this plan to aim for the World Cup has been in place for a long time. And I do think that maybe this is just a perception in Britain, and especially with England and Wales, there seems always to be a focus on the Six Nations. It's important to win the Six Nations instead of maybe focusing on the World Cup. Do you feel like for France now, with a World Cup in 18 months at home, France managed to win a Six Nations beforehand, or do you think it doesn't really matter too much? Now, I think, I think it's important if we win it. I thought that last year, I remember that conversation with you guys last year, and I thought France knew, do need some silverware now for the team itself. I mean, we got to win it this year. We got to win the Six Nations this year, or at least next year before the World Cup. Particularly, we play England, Ireland at home, uh, you know, they are the, for me, one of the other favorites is Harlan. So we're playing them at home. I think we should win it this year. I will be very disappointed if we don't win it this year. It like there was a change in the way that they were going to approach things, that they were going to say, we're going to give the youngsters a go. Doesn't matter about results right now. It's more about giving them a go and trusting them and saying, go on, you be the future of French rugby. Do you agree? Yes, definitely. 
Definitely, it is true. But let's not forget as well all the work of Bernard Laporte as well, working with all the clubs, and uh, that was, that did have a huge impact as well. So so it's all a really all federation effort, and uh, and uh, you know. I think they all work together for the first time. Let's have a look at the games, because as you said, you have England and uh, Ireland at home, which are probably your toughest game. <laughs> That's the fixtures there. Uh, first up, you have Italy at home. And no disrespect to Italy, I think everyone is going to be ha getting a bonus point win against them. It's, it's an interesting one having the Italians first, because usually if you have them late in the competition, it'd be a chance to give maybe some players a chance to play, some rotation. Do you think Galtier will be like, right, let's go with our strongest team, let's get a good win to start off? Or do you think he might try a few things out? No, I think he will be a strong team, uh, purely because, uh, well, Dupont and Nantabag will start, because uh, purely because they didn't play much anyway. Uh, I think Dupont did have a game, the first game on Saturday, didn't play since the 11th of December, I believe. So this first game it was last Saturday. He didn't play that well, but at least he got a game under his belt now. So I think we'll play against Italy to be uh, ready. Uh, I think we'll have a good squad against Italy. I think we will uh, want to start strong. I, I don't believe for one second he will put some... No, no, no. I think it will be Jamine, Pono, Dante, Ficou, Dupont, mm. Tamak, Woki, Hardred. All those players will play, I think. The game was later in the tournament. There would potentially be an opportunity yeah. to rotate. But with it first up, you want to get a win, yeah. a really yeah. solid yeah. win. And uh, win. And again, at the start of France, I mean, yeah, Italy don't really stand a chance in that one. I don't think so, to be honest. Uh, next yeah. up, though, probably maybe the hardest game of the competition. Yeah. You welcome Ireland in. Of course, they beat the All Blacks as well. They seem to have changed their style a little bit over the autumn, a bit more attacking. They put 60 points on... Uh, Japan put 50 odd points on Argentina. Do you think this will be the biggest challenge? I believe so. I think uh, Andy Farrell do a tremendous job for Ireland. Uh, they changed the style of rugby a little bit, and he did manage to uh, to uh, revamp the squad a little bit of their game. And uh, and uh, I think they look really exciting as well. Very mm. very exciting. They for me their second favorite. Say that I think we will be them, but. Mm. It will be a tougher game. It will yeah. be definitely a tougher game. But uh, but uh, yeah, but yeah, we we'll see. I mean, you know, it's always a tough game anyway. Mm. I spoke to an Irish fan um, yesterday as I was doing an Ireland preview for them, and he said that he thinks that it's going to be the battle in the pack that's going to win this game because both teams have incredible backlines. France probably have the better one, but it's about which team can get the platform to play. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yes, 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 but uh, yes, definitely. But uh, well, we they, we both have a strong pact, and uh, I th yeah, I, yes, I agree. But uh, it's going to be a big battle. But I think uh, nine and ten will make the difference for the mm -hmm. flair in the middle of that. I think Dupont and Tamak will make the, the difference on that. But yeah. even you know, it's going to be because I cannot see the French uh, the French pact collapse. They will all day anyway. Yeah. So they both team will will hold it. So it will, it will unless one team collapse completely. I, mm. But I I can see it happen. I can yeah, see it happen. I, I think this will be one of the games of the tournament and could be really important at the end of the competition. You mentioned that battle between Dupont and Antimac, and you'd say Sexton, maybe Gibson Park, maybe Connor Murray. That's going to be a fascinating battle. But yeah. the form that Dupont is on. And then you can bring someone like a Jali Bear off, or you can bring a Maxi Machineau off. Uh, exactly. It's exciting. Machineau, I don't think he's in the squad, isn't it? I don't think he is, actually. Oh, is he not in there? All oh, right, okay. No, no, we go Quillon. We go now in 10. Uh, we have. Uh, well, the good news was Jali Bear because he was supposed to be injured and he just came back. Mm. So I was quite happy about that because, you know, to have a, a sub like that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and he's playing well, so you, well for Bordeaux. Bordeaux doing really well this season as well. So top uh, on the top fourteen, yeah. yeah. No, no, he's yeah. a, he's a. You cannot call him. You cannot call him a sub anyway. I mean, it's just mm. unfortunate to have a Tamak in ten as well. And I said, you know, it's this kind of. I think we we are really lucky because with the depth of our mm. squad is 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 horrendous basically. And let's move on to the next game, which is Scotland away at Murrayfield. Um, Scotland will have played 
uh, England and Italy uh, first up. This will be their uh, second game at Murrayfield. Both teams like to play quite similar styles, don't they? Um, First of all, can you tell me a little bit about what the way people think about Finn Russell in France is? Because obviously he's at Racing, very exciting player, really exciting squad at Racing. How do people in France feel about him? Oh, he's a well-known France. So people really like him. Um, I think his performance this year is not as good as he used to be. I don't think, I mean, uh, last uh, last Saturday, uh, they played against uh, Toulouse, wasn't it? I think, yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, they, he didn't play that great. It wasn't a fantastic game. I mean, neither of the team did play well. But he didn't dictate the game. He didn't. So, I don't know. It doesn't seem too much in form to me. But uh, well, he's a great player. He's a yeah. he's a fabulous player, and uh, and uh, no, he's well. You know, people really like him in France, and uh, you know, he, no, no, no. Yeah, he's a good, good, good reputation, and yeah, he's uh, yeah. As I said, like to play really attacking rugby. Do you think it'll just be a case that France are just better than Scotland at that type of game? That they are just a little bit ahead of Scotland. I think. I think we will produce a more exciting rugby than Scotland. But mm-hmm. as I said that, it's going to be a very tough game as well. And uh, and uh, but after what's happened last year, I think the French will go with a big, you know, big revenge to take on Scotland. And uh, and I think we go the player to overpower Scotland, to be honest with you. I mean, our back, I, I can see, you know, with Fiku and Vakata, yeah. you know, again, Dupont, okay, we're not going to say it all the time, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, you kind of have to, really. I mean, uh, you know, if they start to, if they start to play rugby properly, I mean, pff, it's all yeah. impossible. It's, it's, I cannot see, you know, there's nobody team will be able to stop them. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that if France can get their power going in the pack, especially get Vakatawa running on hard lines, I think you'll just have too much power for Scotland and then, you can get the ball wide. You can get it into the hands of Dupont and to Mark Peno and let them uh, play. Yeah. I think that will be an exciting game. But you come to the Principality, you come to Cardiff to face my team, Wales. I'm going to tell you here right now, I'm not too confident going into this year's <laughs> tournament. Although I said the same thing last year and somehow yeah. we managed uh, to win that one. Um A lot of really good games between us over the years. Um, I remember we won the Grand Slam in 2008. We won the Grand Slam in 2012 against you. So I don't want to like say that's going to happen again. But there have been some great games. Um, What do you make of Wales this year? How would France approach uh, this game, do you think? They will be very careful because anyway, you go to the Principality Stadium. So it's always a... uh... A culture shock eh, for many players, you know, it's like, uh, you know, the, for me, you know, I should not say that, but for me, it's uh, my favorite stadium, rugby stadium mm-hmm. in the world. I've been a few times and I just love it. It's fantastic. And uh, so it's always a big thing to go there. And uh, it's always uh, very, very tricky indeed. And, uh, you know, that is definitely a stadium when you can say you play 16 against 15. That is one of the stadiums, or you can say that. And and uh, I know I'm going to make a few people angry, but it's nothing like Twickenham or, or mm. you know nothing like that. I mean, Principality Stadium is huge. It's it's fabulous. And the Welsh, they're always tricky to be there, and uh, anything can happen with the Welsh there. So so they will be uh, they will be careful. They will again, again. I think that team. I think they're professional. They they you know they will they will not take anything for granted anymore. Mm. They so don't they mistake as a young team. They don't let already. I think they will not repeat. So if they play the rugby again, I'm sorry, Brenda. I think we will win it. <laughs> Final game then of the Six Nations, potentially a Grand Slam decider, maybe a title decider. England at Twickenham. It's not a bad game to finish off, is it? Um, what a game this could be. Lots of amazing battles over the years. Uh, I think this could be an crazy game because England very strong at front, like France. But over the autumn, they brought the likes of Marcus Smith in, who's incredible. Um, they've got some brilliant youngsters like Freddie Stewart coming through. How big of a challenge do you think this would be for France, especially let's say that it is a Grand Slam decider? Do you think they'd be able to cope with the pressure? OK, listen to me very careful. We will win that game. <laughs> <laughs> especially with you living in England. You've got to be careful what you say. <laughs> uh, no, I, no, I, no, I said it's a must. Okay, that, that one is a must, and uh, and uh, I think for every single Frenchman 
Yeah, for 64 million of us, we got to win the game. Yeah, is and, that the biggest game? That. Is that the biggest game for the French people? Would you say? Yeah, 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 yeah. Always, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm going to put you on the spot. I'd like you to give me your prediction for the Six Nations from sixth up to the winners. Don't you dare put Wales in sixth, by the way. Don't do it. <laughs> but could you give well, me uh, your predictions for the Six Nations? Who's going to finish bottom? Well, Italy, obviously. For me, Italy, I'm afraid I have to say Wales. In fifth, Scot yeah. Yeah, yeah. In fifth, Wales. Uh, Scotland. Scotland, England. Okay, let's say Scotland, England, Ireland, France. Oh, interesting. Do you think there'll be a grand slam for France this year? Do you think you'll go all the way? I do. Yeah. I do. I do. I don't like to say it, but myself, mm. and it's not be arrogant, is now is a good year for me to do it so. So there we go. That's the preview done and dusted. Massive shout out to Yannick for jumping on. Really do appreciate it. And if you have enjoyed, as always, let me know your predictions in the comments. Give it, this video a like and, of course, subscribe if you're watching it on YouTube. If you're listening on the audio, please do give us a review. It massively helps and helps to get the pod out there. And, of course, the Italy preview will drop tomorrow night, while Wales will come out on Thursday. Then Friday we'll have individual previews for all of the games. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the Six Nations. What a feast of rugby we have in store. And I'll see you again here on the channel very soon.